Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Alright, pack one, pick one. What jumps out here? Tendershoot Dryads, Archon of Sun's Grace for maybe some enchantment synergies. I'm mainly looking at Tendershoot Dryads. This, if it goes unanswered, can just take over a game by itself. And then if we can pick up some ramp in green, we can get it out a little bit sooner. Yeah, I think Dryad's the most powerful card here. It's also the only green card, so we're not passing any green, which is good. All right, second pack. I don't hate taking a card like Castle Garenbrig early, because this is just kind of free ramp built into the mana base. And if we end up with enough playables, improving the land slot can be valuable. Evolution Sage is probably going to be okay in some green-white and blue-green proliferate plus one counter decks. Uh, Yarok could be fun to build around, but it's three colors, so it's not like there's a ton of mana fixing necessarily. Uh, Visitation is still kind of clunky. There's Gem Razor, which is, you know, playable, but not particularly exciting. I think I'm just picking the land here. Castle's just so powerful in a ramp strategy where we're trying to play five and six mana creatures. Hmm, Collected Company is an interesting twist. I mean, it's a powerful card if we can build around it, but not the best with what we currently have. Sap Herd, you know, is a curve filler. It does make a saplings, so it does synergize with a Dryad, but don't really want to third pick it. Could also take a Loxodon if we end up in kind of a token strategy, then Convoke is a powerful mechanic. Could just take like a cheap removal spell like Sheevan Fire. I think I'm leaning Loxodon. And then see if we can maybe end up green-white, hope to wield the Sap Herd. Ooh, perfect. Conclave Mentor. Goes perfectly with our Loxodon and the green-white tokens. Can hope to wheel like a random 2-drop here. Not really passing anything amazing. Alright, got some options here. Definitely a fan of Reclamation Sage in any sort of cube draft. Usually plenty of targets for it. Uh, Siona, more of a an enchantment creature than a plus one counter creature. Could always take a temple in case we want to splash red. Not too high on Titanic Brawl even though it synergizes with plus one counters. I think I just take Reclamation Sage, this usually makes the cuts. Alright, got some nice options here too. Tendershoot Dryad is a 2-2 creature, so we can find it with the Bugler, as well as Reclamation Sage, Conclave Mentor, so Bugler is looking pretty good. Also a big fan of the Visionary, can ramp us into Dryad on turn 4. Fauna Shaman's okay, but I think I'm leaning Bugler or Visionary here. Let's take the Bugler. Visionary is probably the safer pick. But Bugler might have more upside if we can pick up enough creatures that go with it. Had we taken the Temple of Abandon, we could maybe look into Domri. Can still take Domri. Ozolith maybe <laughs> has a bit of synergy in this deck if we end up with enough plus one counters. Although currently we only have the Loxodon. So it's kind of medium. Roar of the Worm doesn't seem great, unless we have a way of discarding it. I think I just take Domri and maybe we'll end up splashing it. It is pretty good if we end up with a couple tokens. And then Grumguli could also be pretty strong. Does synergize with the Sapperling tokens from Tender Shoot as well. Doesn't say non-token. Angel Vitality is like playable, but not particularly synergistic. I guess we can find it with the Bugler. That's about it. 
Eh, maybe it's still okay. I don't know how likely I am to splash reds. Could of course take the Triome as kind of a red-white dual lands. I'll just take the Angel Fine Curve Filler. Didn't wheel anything too useful here, but there were no green cards to begin with. Just take a black-white dual land in case we want to splash black. Nothing here really. Maybe the captain. I guess this has a little bit of synergy with Conclave Mentor. Could also consider Sheevan Fire on the splash. I don't know. We'll try and pick up some more plus one counter synergies here. So we had a promising start, but then we didn't see a ton of plus one counter stuff. To go with our Conclave Mentor. So currently green white, maybe with a red splash. All right, only red cards remain. Maybe we want some tokens to go with Loxodon and Domri. All right, we wield Temple of Abandon, so maybe we'll splash a bit of red, who knows. Second pack, we've got a couple of options. Song of Freilis could be great as it kind of works well with the plus one counter theme as well as maybe a token theme we could develop. Conclave Tribunals, always solids. And then Fates Feathers, probably worse than Tribunal, but still pretty good. I think I'm gonna go with the Song of Freilis here and then hope to pick up enough counters and tokens to go with it. All right, it's gotta be Pelt Collector here, nice one drop. Turn one Pelt Collector, turn two Mentor means we get a 3-3 three, three Pelt Collector. And then can maybe hope to wheel a Bloom Hulk. So if I'm splashing red, it's probably only for Domri at the moment. Yeah, we're relatively likely to get Bloom Hulk on the wheel. I don't imagine too many other people are gonna be interested in it. Unless there's like a blue-green proliferate drafter at the table. I guess that we can always take a Dawn Treader Elk just to kind of ramp. Release the dogs it would work quite well with Song of Freilis. So that's a consideration, although we can find it with the Bugler. I don't have a ton of two drops yet, so I'm kind of liking this Elk. There's also the Bobcat, which would be okay. Danitha's fine. I think I'm taking Elk and then hoping to wheel the release the dogs or Danitha or even the Bobcat here. Just looking at my curve, I need more two drops. Ugin's Conjurant is also fine, but uh, there's a good chance we wheel that one too. All right, Rishkar seems amazing here with our Conclave Mentor. Uh, Chamber Sentry could also be playable, Warbriar Blessing could be fine, but it's gotta be Rishkar. Can even find it with our Militia Bugler. Yeah, Bugler is looking pretty good in this deck. Alright, don't hate a Jade Light Ranger, works quite well with Conclave Mentor as well, just a good value creature. Patient Rebuilding, definitely powerful one in the pack too. Gus Walker, nice aggressive creature. Don't have a ton of synergy with Fiend Artisan. And in a similar fashion, we can now take Branch Walker. Unicorns also serviceable. Don't have too many elves to go with Imperius Perfect. Of course, it's also just a good mana sink that can make some tokens. So it's still a decent card, of course, but I think I still want a two drop here. Didn't think we want Hushbringer in the deck, have a few ETB effects. So instead, can maybe take a Chimera just as a curve filler. We're not really using the graveyard, so 
Escape also comes with a plus one counter. Has a little bit of synergy. Don't think we're going to be an explore deck. We would need a lot of lands for that to be worth it. If we were splashing blue, Skydiver would be a consideration. Don't have any blue fixing yet, though. I mean, Thicket is always a safe bet. Venerable Knight as a one-drop could be okay. Could play Incubation just for the Incubation half. I'll just take the lands. Cycling lands are good. So Hallowed Fountain would have been the pick if we took the Skydiver. How good is Lead the Stampede in our deck? It seems okay. We've got mostly creatures. So I don't hate Lead the Stampede. Endre could also be fine. Don't have a ton of ramp to go with it. But it's always serviceable. Guardian's also fine. Ooh, nice. We wield the Bloom Hulk. And then can take the Conjurant now. Fine Curve Filler that synergizes with Mentor. We would have had a decent amount of fixing for the Skydiver had we taken it. Probably want a Blessing over Heralds. Chamber Sentry could also be a 2-2 two -two or maybe a 3-3 three -three if we splash. But we don't have much removal yet, so we'll take a Blessing. And a Mantle of the Wolf could be okay. Could take a Gust Walker as a decent 2-drop. I guess I could use an extra 2-drop here. Can also find it with our... Militia Bugler. Alright, so heading into the last pack. Just one more tokens. Didn't end up wheeling the Release the Hounds. And then uh, some more plus one counter synergies are welcome too. Ooh, we opened a nice pack. Lots of options. Unbreakable Formation jumps out as being pretty powerful. Armorcraft Judge has nice plus one counter synergy. Temple of Plenty for fixing. Probably not the best Calyx deck. Silvala can be a powerful card, but we don't have the best synergy with it. Not really a Spirit Dancer deck, so I think it's between Formation and probably the land. And we can hope to wield Armorcraft Judge. I think I'm just going to take Formation. Alright, this pack is also very good. Champion of Lampold seems kind of perfect. It works with tokens, it works with the plus one counter synergies. Makes our creatures unblockable. Knight of Autumn would also be great, although we already have a copy of Reclamation Sage, so it's not as important, even though, of course, this would be better in our deck, since it also has that plus one counter synergy. Um, the Planeswalker is also decent here. Leafkin Druid I would play. So a lot of good cards, but I think I'm leaning Champion of Lampold. Ooh, nice Trostani. Definitely the pick here. I mean, Path of Discovery could be pretty good. It still works with tokens as well. And Explorer means plus one counters, which also works with our deck. Status Statue could always play it for just a status half. Or maybe splash a bit of black. I'll take the path. And then a couple of options here. Incubation Druid seems pretty strong if we have any way of putting a plus one counter on it. And the ramp is always useful. Uh, Basri's Acolyte would also be quite good, although it is double white, which might be a little difficult to cast since we're primarily green. Uh, Kiora doesn't seem amazing. There's al also the Triome as just a tapped dual land. I think I'm leaning Incubation Druids. And then it's got to be the Wildwood Scourge here. Got a ton of plus one counter synergy now. Untamed Kavu would also make the cuts. But got to be the Scourge. Alright, this is a bit of a blank. Doesn't matter too much what we take. Nice dual lands. Brontodon would also be nice, but again, we already have Reclamation Sage, and I could use a bit of fixing. Alright, so we're definitely gonna have enough playables, definitely don't need to splash reds. 
Got a couple lanes as well. And can still hope to wheel a card or two. Temple of Plenty and Judge wield. Looking at the curve... I think I might want to judge. We did pick up an extra dual land. I don't have a ton of four drops. And we do have quite a few plus one counters going around now. Yeah, let's take the judge. And a Knight of Autumn wields. Probably better than Leafkin Druids. Don't think we're playing Typhon, but maybe. Alright, so a Scourge is kind of a 2-drop. Conjurant we can potentially play at 1. And then... Pretty happy with all the 2-mana cards. Don't need to play Angel of Vitality. Uh, we'll have to look at the numbers for Lead the Stampede. Chimeras easily cuttable too. Uh, Retriever seems pretty weak. But I like everything else. So this is 24 cards plus 3 lines, so I would only need to make one cut. Don't know if we want to play 16 lands, but Two of my lands also cycle, so I think playing 17 with two cycling lands is maybe a little safer. Castle isn't doing a whole lot for us, but it can potentially help me double spell some three drops on turn five, or maybe sink more mana into a Wildwood Scourge or Conjurance, so it's still okay. So I could just cut Reclamation Sage since we have Knight of Autumn. Looking at my curve, I probably want to cut a three drop. Pretty happy with Path of Discovery. We've got Judge, Path, and Lead the Stampede as kind of card draw. Engines. Yeah, let's just go to Reclamation Sage. And then the mana distribution. Definitely quite a bit more green than white. If I can get away with like seven white sources, that would probably be fine. Currently have eight, so. Yeah, this seems good. And then we have 10 green sources. Decent hands. All right. Now that we hit our land drop, I think I'm just replaying Pelt Collector. Or am I? I guess it's only going to pick up one counter from these two and not two. But I kind of want to have it in play for Bloom Hulk eventually. Hey, Amy with the raid. Welcome, welcome everyone. We just started our very first cube draft with a green-white plus one counter slash token deck. All right, and the Serendib of Freed is pretty scary. Uh, we need white mana. Don't have a ton of removal in our deck. So our best chance is to just put a lot of power and toughness in play. Trostani could also be nice. I mean, Bloom Hulk is pretty strong here. So that's fine. And then this now tramples. What if I send the trampler at Kazmina and Jade Line at their face? And 
And then if they want to trade for Jade Light, I kill Kazmina. If they want to save Kazmina, they have to lose some of their creatures. Yeah, it seems better. And I'm fine if they want to double block here. And then if we find white mana, we get to slam down Trostani. If not, okay, maybe go digging with uh, Branchwalker. So Kazmina down. They can still flash back that Silent Departure for 5 mana. Which would be pretty effective at resetting the Pult Collector here. So close game, we'll see what happens. If we can find an untapped white source of the top, I like my chances. If we don't, it's gonna be a close one. All right, Departure bounces Spell Collector, and we take three. Ooh, Champion of Lampold, that's a nice one. If they lose the 2-2 token, then they also lose their ability to double their tokens with Risk the Redeemed, although I guess they can start making 1-1s, one but as long as Champions in play they won't be able to block. Yeah, we're probably not going to play Path of Discovery this game. Opponents had a pretty aggressive start. And yeah, they just explode. Champion of Lambholds, pretty brutal here. Ooh, this hand's nice. So if we play Scourge on turn 2, it's not going to grow the Pelt Collector but it does still put an extra creature in play for Loxodon purposes, so it's probably fine. Uh, I guess we change plans now. And if we can convoke Loxodon with Druid, it also gets to make 3 mana, although it's not like we have a ton of mana sinks. Hmm. Interesting. So I can't really kill this priest, can I? I could convoke Loxodon, and then next turn Druid makes 3 mana so I can play Tender Shoots, and maybe even play Warbriar Blessing in the same turn. I think that's the play here. Oh wait, what just happened? Oh no! We tapped Incubation Druid for mana instead of convoking it. That's unfortunate. Well, there goes my entire game plan. I guess we can still play Tender Shoot Dried. Yeah, that's probably still the play. Suppose I can attack first. Alright, Heartless Act sadly deals with our Tender Shoots. Who knows, maybe it was a blessing in disguise, because now we can maybe adapt uh, Incubation Druid to put three counters on it instead of one. Although the Priest isn't super scary with no other creatures in play. It's just if they maybe uh, manage to like steal one of my creatures, that could be bad. Because red black typically the steal and sacrifice archetype. Could also just play like a 5 5 Scourge, and then next turn when we adapt, we get to put some counters on Scourge as well. I guess playing a 5 5 Scourge is also going to grow a Pelt Collector here. So let's do that instead. And then we can easily sack a 1-1 one -one token to priests. Which 
Judith is fine. Alright. I think I like Adapt Incubation Druid plus Blessing, not even bother with Lead the Stampede this turn. And then I guess we'll put it on the Pelt Collector. Find Judith. And her point explodes. Well, Pelt Collector putting in some work. And in the end, the missed counter on the Incubation Druids didn't end up making a huge difference, luckily. Alright, this hand's a little on the slow side. No two or three drops, but we do have a lot of two and three mana creatures that we could draw, and some of them also come with plus one counters to set up Armorcraft Judge. And Tender Shoot Right is one of the more powerful creatures in our deck. So I'm still tempted to keep this, although we could easily get punished by an aggressive start. Well, we drew both of our five drops, so our late game is looking good. If we can find something to play before turn four, that would be great. Perfect. Song of Fraley's probably can afford to put that in the graveyard. Like, ideally I would just find another 3 mana creature to play here, to curve into Armorcraft Judge. But the fact that Branchwalker picked up a counter is also great here. I might end up just using the Blessing. Alright. Yeah, I think I just killed the Aven Eternal. Like, if my opponent starts spending for mana to draw a card, I think I'm okay with it. All right. Play Judge. Probably see a chum block from the 1-1. One -one. I guess there wasn't a reason not to attack first. And then next turn we have to decide which 5-drop to play first. Put play, Pyromancer keeps up 3 mana, so they could have a counter spell technically. Let's say Trostani resolves, then I could still Convoke Loxodon afterwards, which would be pretty strong. So I think that's what I'm going to go for here. Yep. And then I don't really have a great attack anymore. Now we can put our castle Garenbrick to use. Play Incubation Druids plus Thunder Shoots. They're probably just gonna activate Sailor here. And then we'll pass. Uh oh. A rest in peace. Thunder Shoot Ride. Yeah, this game's not looking great. They managed to deal with both of our 5-drops. Th 
Alistair can pick up the counter spell again. And now the Sailor's card advantage does start adding up. Yeah, needed to draw something here. Alright, I guess we need to tap everything anyway. Or I could have used the Incubation Druid for mana, but then it doesn't get a counter. Alright, I guess we just hope they don't kill the Loxodon. What card can save me here? Lead the Stampede could potentially deliver here. Hoo -hoo, wow. I'll take it. Now what? I do have a lot of mana available here. So can use Castle... We want to play Champion of Lampold first. You can go Champion into Pelt Collector, into Ranger, and then uh, I could still potentially play something else. If this makes white mana, then I can play Gustwalker, not sure which is more important here. Yeah, I guess we'll make whites. Bugler, I guess that's good enough. Like, we're kind of all in on this Champion of Lambhold plan. So our opponent can block any of our creatures. So I can hit them for 12. I mean, that sounds good to me. Still have a decent amount of blockers back. If they can't remove the champion, they're in trouble. Wow, what a comeback. I don't believe it. I lead the Stampede for five cards. That was a juicy one. All right. This hand seems fine. Could even consider playing the Conjurant as a one-drop, just to have more creatures in play for Song of Freilies. Although, how does the sequencing look like here? I could go turn 2 Branchwalker, turn 3 Conjurant, turn 4 Bloom Hulk, And maybe we can set up the song to combo with Trostani so the tokens pick up a counter or two. Yeah. Let's just wait. So, red whites tokens. Alright, I'll take a land. Could also play Champion of Lampold first. Definitely have some interesting options. I think I like Champion of Lampold and then next turn maybe go Conjurant plus Song of Freilies. Or I can even go Song of Freilies into a 4-drop if both my creatures live. Probably should have attacked first. Ooh, 
Conclave Mentor, man. So many good cards. So if I go Song of Freilis, I can still play Mentor, which even puts an extra counter on the Champion of Lambholtz. And then I could still play a 2-2 Conjurant, which then also gets additional counters. Yeah, that seems pretty good. Alright, we're going off. All our cards in our hand are amazing. Still get to gain two. Potent passes. Oh boy. Now what? I guess I could play Scourge. For one, plus Trostani. Yeah, I want to play Trostani now, because next turn I might not be able to, once the song goes away. So, Scourge for one into Trostani seems pretty decent. Well, next turn we could just be attacking for lethal with Trample, Vigilance, and Indestructible, and our opponent explodes. Well, that was a pretty nice sequence. Alright, decent draw. Can go Elk into... maybe Rishkar into Bloomhook. Can maybe play Knight of Autumn first to proliferate. Ooh, Conclave Mentor. Don't mind if I do. Mentor into Rishkar is quite a start. Smash for four. Opponent on blue-white flyers, it seems. Alright, Staggering Insights, pretty strong, although we can blow it up with Knight of Autumn. So we've got some options. I think if we just blow up the insights, that's probably for the best. And then I'm just gonna smash for eight. Blessing, can remove a blocker. Although now I kind of want to get some additional creatures in play. I can go Tender Shoot right plus Elk. Doesn't seem bad. And then next turn we can maybe refuel with the Armorcraft Judge, draw two cards. Alright, center opponent concedes to the Tender Shoot Ride. Too far behind. Alright, decent hands. Could go turn two Scourge, turn three play Knights with two counters on it. 
Or we can be patient on Scourge and just play Gus Walker on two. I'm getting treasure hunt PTSD after seeing a turn one sandbar cycled. Alright, battlements are put on some sort of Sultai deck. Yeah, I guess I'll just play the Gust Walker for now. Song of Freelies, play 1-1 one, one Wildwood Scourge, and then next turn we'll have at least 5 mana. Don't hate that idea. Kinda need to be able to get a creature big enough to then eventually fight the Mystic. So yeah, let's go for it. Patient Rebuilding is gonna meet Knight of Autumn. Although I kind of wanted to uh, play Knight with counters, but I guess now Loxodon's not a bad pickup. Yeah, I think I just want to kill the rebuilding right away. And then still have two mana, but that's not really enough to do anything useful, sadly. Alternatively, we could Convoke Loxodon, which sets up a better Song of Freilies next turn, and then I can still play Knights. I don't know, I think I just want to kill this rebuilding while we can. And then just pass. Don't really want to exert my Ghostwalker. Next turn we can exert it for free thanks to the Vigilance from Song of Freilies. Alright, so that happens, and then I can attack first, and then second main I can convoke Loxodon and use Blessing, and then I can uh, finish off the Murmuring Mystic, seems pretty good. Gonna make sure to exert here. Although I guess now if I exert and then tap it with Convoke, it's no longer going to untap next turn. Maybe should have considered that. And then finish off the Mystic. And then we can fight with one of our indestructible creatures. Aha, uh -huh, and they had a blink. It's too bad. But at least we can replay a 3-3 Scourge. Alright, opponent can play Beanstalk Giant as a 6-6. It's pretty large. Lead the Stampede can find us more goodies. And so can the Bugler. Bugler could find a copy of Pelt Collector, which would be a nice one to play as well. Although I guess Scourge into Unbreakable could be pretty strong too. Alright, never mind. Let's just play Scourge for three. Ooh, wow. Well, that's painful. That 
There goes our entire board. I guess we'll play the bugler now. I mean, if the Tender Shoot Riot gets to stick around, that's potentially a way out. Yeah, being stuck on four lands when we have Lead the Stampede in hand is not great. Don't even gain any life since Intervention is minus X minus X. So this one's uh, not looking great. When Mentor dies, it checks the... Is it toughness or power? Power. So if it has zero power, you gain zero life. So do I chump now or do I wait? Probably want to chump now. Conjuring could be slightly better than Bugler, I suppose, if we draw the um, Armorcraft Judge or the... Or the four mana Bloom Hulk, so we've got a bit more plus one counter synergy here. Yeah, path is a bit too late. Definitely got a chump now. All right, I guess we're just dead. GG's. Well, that uh, find finality got us pretty good. All right, this hand could use some two or three drops to follow up our pelt collector, but if we find one of them, then the judge is also going to be pretty strong. Haven't seen much of Path of Discovery in action, since a lot of games have been over quickly. Red-white aggro. I could cycle the grove. Probably should. We don't have an incredibly high curve. And we already have four lines for Path and Judge. Ah, Bugler's a nice one. Take a Scourge, I think. And then next turn I might go Path. Like, I'm fine trading here. After Path we can maybe set up Scourge, or we can first uh, maybe use Branchwalker plus Blessing in the same turn. They've got their own Bugler. And hits a Gitu Lava Runner, just a one instant in the graveyard so far. Yeah, I think it's a fine spot to deploy path. Get that incremental advantage, and it's pretty great with our uh, Scourge as well. We 
Ooh, Trostani. All right, now I like Scourge plus Branchwalker even more, because then next turn if we play Trostani with a living Scourge, it's going to pick up a ton of counters and be the biggest creature in play. Do I want Ranger? I guess it's not bad. And it guarantees that I find all plus one counters to grow a Scourge. Yeah, I guess it's fine. Because I can still go Blessing plus Ranger in the same turn. And I already have five mana for Trostani. So finally seeing Path in action here. And then... We can even get some plus one counters on the tokens, so we can draw even more with the Armorcraft Judge. Attacks with both. I think I only blocked the Lieutenant here with my Branchwalker, expecting some sort of trick or burn spell. Don't really want to lose Scourge, because we can easily make it enormous next turn, and then once it's like an 8-8, they basically need white removal to get rid of it, because so, they're not going to get past it with burn spells. Escapes Rage Hounds. Pretty happy with that outcome. Ah, slam Trostani. Ah, lead the Stampedes. Is that really necessary when I'm about to explore and draw with the Judge? Probably not. But I will play this out, because we could use more mana. And then next turn we get to go Ranger into Judge, maybe. Cartouche to give first strike, so they could still have a burn spell to eventually take out my Scourge. Do I want to take five? Not really. Next turn we can just Blessing to kill the Rage Hound, so we'll just jump for now. Alright, now that they're tapped out we can safely fight. Unbreakable Formation is quite a draw. Decisions, decisions. So taking out Rage Hound is kind of the priority here. Yeah, let's play Judge. I probably wanted to play my planes because I do have Pelt Collector in the deck for one green mana. That seems good. Wow, Song of Freilis is also amazing here. And then we'll probably just pass. Don't want to tap my two blockers to play Mentor. But the next turn I get to go Mentor plus a bunch of other stuff that makes counters. And then on the third chapter from Song we'll easily be able to attack for lethal. Or I can even Formation if I wanted to. An Embarrassment of Riches. Yeah, I guess we can J light first. Gotta be careful that I don't end up decking here from exploring too much. Uh, Alec can go to the graveyard. Sure, I'll keep a Gust Walker. All right, I could get the third chapter now with the Bloom Hulk proliferates. Second so attack right away, and that's probably just game over.
And I can even play my formation. But probably not necessary when my creatures are already indestructible. Well, that was quite something. Alright, so we're on the draw. Missing white mana for Mentor. This one's pretty sketchy. Judge doesn't do much at the moment. Yeah, I think this might be a mulligan. This is much better. So both Bugler and Path are kind of card advantage cards in the spot. Scourge I can play on turn 2, Knight I can play on turn 3. So I think I get rid of Bugler and keep Path, which is probably a little bit better long term if we can find a fourth land. Um, blue red spells, alright. If they have some cheap burn spells for Scourge, they can easily take it out. Pelt Collector shows up a little bit late. Could still play it and then next turn play it 2 2 Scourge. Nah, I think I still go for Scourge now. Right, they've got a burn spell. Scourge down. Still playing knights with counters on it. Ooh, wow. Wizard's Lightning. Very efficient here for one mana, thanks to the Biomancer being wizard. So that didn't pan out. And our opponent with a very efficient curve. Still has two mana available that they didn't use to adapt Biomancer, so could still be holding up some interaction. Playing path is probably going to be too slow. So just going to play a 4 mana 4-4 four four here. But they might even counter this. I will not proliferate onto the Sprite Dragon. If I can help it. This card's Gutter Snipe, which is also a scary one. Yeah, their deck seems pretty strong. Soulscar Mage can also shrink down our creatures with burn spells and have a third one with a braid. Yeah, and we're in trouble. Just gotta jump and then hope to draw a land for tender shoot pretty much. But even then, I'm still dead to the Sprite Dragon. Yeah, there's not much I can do here. I'm just dead on board. Well, that was quite a beating. Think we've got a keeper. Only two lands, but incubation druids to ramp. They had a pause, but no one mana play. Ouch. Killing incubation druids is bad news. Alright, so we can attack, exert, and then Warbriar Blessing to kill Piper. Hope they don't have an unsummon here. Oh, 
All right, next turn we get to play a Scourge into all sorts of plus one counter synergies. Get censored. So that's what they were holding that they could cycle for one blue mana. I think I'm just jamming Tender Shoot here. All my other cards are kind of underwhelming. Our tender shoot hasn't survived much this draft. Ooh, discards a champion of wits, which they can eternalize next turn. They've got a pretty powerful looking control deck, and our draw hasn't really come together here. Gets countered. Yeah, we're super far behind. This is where we need that lead the stampede to draw us five cards. I don't know if there's even a point in playing the Armorcraft Judge with no counters in play. I think I'll save it. And they're pretty close to transforming the Midnight Clock as well. So I can hold the Judge, discard lands, or I can just play a 3-3 three, three, four, four. Didn't see myself uh, coming back. Could play it for three into judge. I think I just gotta play it for seven here to have a decent blocker. Eldest Reborn gets back one of our creatures. What's it gonna be? Yeah, Sir Eleonora, pretty good with the Midnight Clock too. Can't really afford to trade here. That puts us dead on board. GG's. Well, the games we lost 
weren't particularly close. We got absolutely crushed. But the games we won, we absolutely crushed our opponents, so it was pretty one-sided either way. And uh, we get a couple random excellent rares for our effort. Alright, that was fun. So that's going to do it for me today. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.